So you know we compare the new procedure technique for uh, PVI? Okay. Radio frequency was a gold standard and it turned out to be safe and simple and effective, however, in extremely experienced hands. You constantly are aware of the complications that might happen with radio frequency energy delivery. When you treat somebody young, for instance, you think about the complications the day before you do the procedure. And the next 30 days, you're still thinking about this patient. Would there damage to the esophagus, for instance? So an extremely rare complication, but it's always in the back of the operator. Beautiful contact. Yeah. Perfect. If you would told us 20 years ago that we would find a strategy that doesn't seem to create PV stenosis or esophageal fistulization, everybody would have immediately signed for this approach. My name is Matthias Dertzgaver. I'm an electrophysiologist practicing in Bruges. I'm happy to work in Bruges. I'm happy to wander around in the small streets after work. It reminds me of the beauty and the richness of the European culture, of the different layers that are present in life, in art. It's a magical city, inspiring also. St. Jan Hospital combines patient care with research and innovation. We have now performed over 300 cases with the FaraWave device. And what I noticed in these 300 cases is this absolute simplicity. Voila. It's magic, you it's so easy. Still a considerable amount of operator experience goes into it because contact is important. Knowing your fluoroscopic views, understanding your electrograms, knowing what contact means. But overall, it is a skill normalizer. There's no doubt. So one application, and, and you can nicely appreciate the signals that are immediately gone, right? Now, being a skill normalizer alone is, is of course not enough. What is important for the patient is the comfort and the safety. Perfecto. At this point in time, there is no reason, not in the preclinical data, not in the clinical data, to mention esophageal injury or pulmonary vein stenosis. Two potentially fatal complications when you decide to do a pulsed field ablation FARA wave procedure. So when you start a day and you see that several cases are planned with FARA wave, you feel of kind relaxed up front because this intriguing safety profile of pulsed field ablation. Also important besides safety is the comfort. And you know, for the first time, patients are asking me the day after the procedure, doctor, did you really treat me yesterday? Because I feel nothing. And this is something that was never said to me using thermal energy. More than half of the patients after a legacy, conventional, let's say, thermal energy procedure, uh, complain of chest pain. And it's not often forgotten by the patient. So far in the experience we had with uh, PVI only and pulse field ablation, we didn't see any of these typical uh, pericardial irritation complaints after the procedure. It's the relative tissue selectivity that is offered by pulse field ablation that makes the inflammatory reaction limited. What Farah Wave does, it kind of keeps the patient on the rhythm control track because it's so well tolerated by the patient. It is easy, if necessary in the future, to do a second procedure because it was really perceived as something easy and straightforward by the patient. Pulse field ablation holds the promise of being the optimal energy source. And Farah Wave might be the optimal delivery platform 